When I teach a class, I always ask the kids to write their signature. And so if you have 10 kids and they each write their signature and you look at them, they all look different. And so I tell them, that's you, that's you, that's you. It's different when you write your signature, so it's gotta be different when you produce your work. It's gotta be your signature. <laughs> Frank Gehry, an architect whose name is famous all over the world. Whether you like Gehry's designs or not, he sure has set his mark on this world. And today we are looking at how this man got to this point. What made him so famous, so loved and so passionately hated. Today we are looking at the story of Frank Gehry. Now for an iconic architect with an inventive style, whose buildings almost seem to move and are known for sweeping curves and unusual materials. Sweeping curves and unusual materials. Calling Frank Gehry's architecture unusual is like calling the character Joe Goldberg from the series You a little stalkerish. Heck, you've got a stalker. Frank Gehry is one of those architects who has been bold in pursuing his vision and aesthetic. But where does this aesthetic come from? Well, to answer this question, we need to go back to the beginning. Okay, Frank Gehry is not his actual name. In 1929, at the time of his birth, he was named Frank Owen Goldberg. And yes, if you didn't do the math quickly enough, the man is 91 years old. From a very young age, his creativity was encouraged by his grandmother, with whom he would build little cities out of scraps of wood. But he didn't just become an architect because he and his grandmother made some wooden buildings together. It is a little more complicated than that. Now, I could tell you the story of how everything happened, but trust me, that would become a full feature film. So, for this part of the story, I am going into the story mode. Frank Gehry was born in Canada and he was a very creative boy. In 1947, his family moved to the US and was filled with a lot of joy. Citation needed. Gary got a job driving a truck as he studied at the LA City College. But he did not choose a major right away. He just wanted knowledge. He tried studied chemical engineering but found it very boring. I mean, he is not wrong. You try and look at a chemical as it is just boring. So what do you want us to do? I don't know. You're scientists. Cheer them up. Cheer them up? Do you even know what a scientist is? When he was young, an architect's lecture he attended. He loved his work so much, hashtag Frank Gehry loves it would have trended. But this lecture that he had heard was back when he was in Toronto. And years later he found out... And it was Alvar Aalto. Anyway, this is getting silly and I should probably stop. But just a few more lines, I promise. I'll fast forward. Peabody Bop! The reason he never thought of studying architecture was because he thought of buildings as bland. He was much more into dance, theatre and art. Everything that could make a spectacle grand. So he transferred his schools and finally a major he picked. Soon he graduated as an architect. Time to get a job. Tick tock tick. But he did not work as an architect for quite some time. Probably because his relatives wanted a lot of free design. Hashtag relatable. Now, I'm going to end this rhyme and keep this format aside. But if you would like to commend me on a job well done, do like, share and subscribe. So basically, architecture wasn't Gary's first choice. And that was because the buildings he saw and studied were very boring. He even attended the city planning program at the Harvard Graduate School of Design, but was so underwhelmed by the program that he dropped it. In 1962, Gary finally established his own practice in LA which obviously expanded over the years. Now, even though we would like to think that Frank Gehry always built these completely mind-shattering, out-of-the-box structures, but that is not technically true. To be honest, Gehry's work started like any other architect out there, especially when you see his early structures. You would not be able to tell that they are made by Gehry. But slowly, as the years progressed, with every project, you saw Gehry express a little more. You see bolder choices in the use of forms, materials and even colours. In 1989, Gary was awarded the Pritzker Prize where the jury cited his work as being always open to experimentation. Gary's work refined with each project and he made quite a name for himself. But then came the project 
that changed his life bringing the name gary to be known all over the world and that project was the guggenheim museum Bilbao is located in the north of Spain. From the 19th century up until the 1970s, it was the most important industrial seaport in the Basque country. With its strategic access to the ocean, Bilbao's economy based on shipbuilding as well as coal and steel production was booming. However, the industries here didn't adapt quickly enough to the changing technical standards. The outdated dockyards and factories had to close. Many workers and their families left the city while those who stayed had no prospects in the future with the city in a desperate need of revamp and a new source of income Bilbao pulled what we today call a Dubai basically create an icon that can attract people from all over the world At the beginning of 1990s, the American Guggenheim Foundation, in search of a location for a European museum, was in negotiations with several important cities. Bilbao's authorities showed the strongest interest in the project. They realized what a huge opportunity the renowned Temple of Art could turn out to be for the rundown city. They kept the competition and Frank Gehry won it and he designed the structure that would change the city of Bilbao forever. The Guggenheim Museum opened on October 19, 1997. This new icon of modern art and architecture was showered with praise. It is the greatest building of our time, said US architect Philip Johnson, adding, "When a building is as good as this one, fuck the art." Now, one thing you will notice about Gary is that people either love his buildings or fucking hate it. There is no middle ground. But whether you like his buildings or not, the Guggenheim Museum turned the city around. The museum was overrun by art and architecture fans from all over the world. The estimated half million visitors per year turned into an entire million. Bilbao started blooming and hired other star architects to rejuvenate the city. Norman Foster built an entire subway line. Alvaro Siza designed a university building, while the pedestrian bridge Zubi Zuri located near the museum was created by Santiago Calatrava. This effect of Guggenheim Museum was so strong and so surprising that it got a name of its own. It was called the Bilbao effect. Well, first of all, if you're going to be an architect, you have to learn the craft. You have to learn how to build, you have to learn the engineering, you have to learn how to be responsible to build something that's not going to leak, that's going to stand up, that's not going to kill people, that's going to be So you have, there's a discipline you have to learn for sure. Since the new museum and the newer fame, Gary's practice went on to newer heights. More and more works kept coming his way and Gary did each one of them in his distinct style. From the Walt Disney Concert Hall to the open air J Pritzker Pavilion to even the New World Center in Miami Beach, Gary went on to create some masterpieces. And again these are masterpieces that you will either love or fucking hate. There were obviously so many more works that he did that I am not going over. Let me just brush over some like the Strata Center at MIT and the Museum of Pop Culture in Seattle, Washington to even Gary's first skyscraper, the Beekman Tower at 8 Spruce Street in New York City. Now as I said before, Gary in his style can be really divisive. You either really like what he has done or really abhor it. Some people refer to this style as defying categorization and reflecting a spirit of experimentation. This man is obviously bold in his pursuit of his aesthetic. People have also openly criticized his designs, and a lot of even architects all over the world abhor his projects. But nobody can deny that in his pursuit of his craft, his style has truly become iconic. I mean an episode of Simpsons is dedicated to Gary. If that is not court and court making it, I don't know what is. Bill, Bill, Bill Bob Bill. You cannot deny that as he's going forward, he's leaving behind a legacy of bold and innovative architecture. How to cut away, you know, take the chance to jump off into the unknown and uh not be afraid to do that. I think what comes out 
is personal, like your signature. For better, for worse, that's worth, it, it may be great, it may be terrible, but you gotta take the chance, right? Hey guys, and that was the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like it, please share it, please subscribe to this channel. But before ending this video, I just wanted to thank, number one, everybody who has become a patron on Patreon. You're really helping me out. You're really helping this channel out. Also, if you would like to become a patron of this channel, you can do so through the link in the description below. I would also like to thank Louisiana channel. Without their original video of Frank Gehry, this video would not have been possible. So every interview shot that you saw in this video, every picturesque, amazingly short buildings you saw in this video were mostly taken from the Louisiana channel video. So that will be in the description below as well. Please go and watch the entire video. It is a long interview that they've taken. It is very, very fruitful. And I'm sure you guys would love it. And while you're there, please subscribe to Louisiana channel as well. And that was it. If you did like this video, let me give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And that was it. I will see you guys soon with more content. Bye-bye.